Hey, hey guys, how are you? Hope everything is well. Uh, yeah, let's just make sure everything's cool with the stream. We seem to be okay. And let's go back. All right. All right, guys. Give me a thumbs up and let me know if you can hear me. Say, we can hear you, Steph. Uh, yeah, so just to be sure. And then I'll jump into the subject and we'll do a little bit of Q&A today. All right. I hope everybody is well. Mm. So, can you hear me? Yep. Very quiet. Hey, hey, how are you? How many people we have? 30 people. All right. Yeah, let me know if you can hear me or not. Greetings, greetings. I hope everybody is super fantastic. Super well. Yeah, hey, everyone greets from Austria. Very cool. Hey, Steph. Can hear. Thank you. That's what I needed. I hope it's clear. Uh, yeah, good, good, good. So we'll just, how many people are on now? All right, oh, already 95 people. Okay, cool. So I'm going to jump into the subject. It's an article I found, but uh, I think it might be interesting. And then we'll do a little bit of Q&A afterwards. And uh, there you go. All right. All right. All clear. Hearing from Iran. Fantastic. Very cool. And I hope everybody is well. Good. Voice is clear. Fantastic. Okay. I appreciate it. Okay. So there's always been a delay between me saying stuff and it coming through the old YouTubes and back again. Latency, right? All right. So let's just jump into the piece. Something I found I thought would be interesting. So I'm going to read through it, give you my commentaries along the way as typical. And uh, we'll take it from here. What's this going on? Oh, yeah. Okay, sorry. Hmm. New behavior. All right. Okay, here we go. So uh, ML engineers are losing their jobs. Learn ML anyway. So this is this was b back in July. So I've been holding this for a while. Um, yeah, let's take a look. Uh, so he says learn ML anyway. The future is bright for those who focus on creating value creating value rather than technical mastery. So let's go in here. So there's the guy's opinion piece. There's a lot of doom and gloom in the field. Again, this is at the height of the COVID pandemic. You know, whenever you have something like that, people are going to go nuts in the negative. Our brains are designed to overemphasize potential fears, potential risk. So you got to always take whatever anxieties you have with a grain of salt. That's an expression that means, you know, don't take it too seriously most of the time because that's just where our brains are designed. So let's just jump into it. Hiring is frozen again back in July. Some hypothesize that investors will lose uh, hope in AI altogether. Google has freeze hiring for ML research. Uber laid off research half their AI team. There will be far more people with ML skills than ML jobs. This is this guy here, whoever Chip is, I don't know. Um, yeah, this is all temporary, by the way. People are talking about AI winter. It makes sense that artificial intelligence, machine learning, and data sciences are the first to go in a crunch. They're luxuries for most businesses. Uh, the, but that doesn't mean the future isn't bright if you create value. So let me just comment on that. What is he trying to say is that at this point in time, uh, those field AI, ML, data science, it's being used a lot in practical work, but it, a lot of it's still in the research phase. So when things are in the research phase, and you got a worldwide one, once in a hundred year pandemic, people pull back on research money and just, you know, they hold on to their bucks until things start to, uh, the smoke starts to clear and everything looks pretty good. So don't worry about it. Things uh, always progress in this way. I've seen this cycle happen over and over again. Mm. Not necessarily with AI, of course, but with other fields. So the... Okay, AI will not affect most AI, AI MLDS jobs. An AI winter is a period of decreased funding and, and interest in AI, but most, most of us don't do research. We read papers, get ideas, innovate, but we use existing techniques. Additionally, the popularity of building ML power products doesn't necessarily correlate with the volume of research coming out. If anything, there's an increasing amount of research that is not being applied. Anecdotally, industry is still catching up with up in its implementation of machine learning invented decades ago. AI powered products are more popular now because ML is more approachable, not because of new research. All right. 
Uh, you do not need bleeding edge AI to solve problems. The opposite is true. Uh, classic algorithms, domain knowledge, something I talk about all, time, all the time, domain knowledge, niche data sets are going to solve most real problems, not deep neural networks. Most of us aren't working on self-driving cars. Yeah, yeah. I read about this in uh, this article, Democratizing AI is Relevant, Data is Siloed, and How to Build an AI Company Anyway. Anyway, in my opinion, focusing on extreme technical competency is overrated outside of large tech companies in contrast to problem-solving mentality and general development skills. Let me read that again because it goes with my basic philosophy of development. In my opinion, focusing on extreme technical competency is overrated outside large tech companies in contrast to problem solving mentality and general development skills. Now, you know that what I've been teaching is practical real world development based on my three decades in the field. And one of the things I keep pointing out to people over and over again, the latest framework, the latest language is not gonna ensure the job. It's this core competency as a developer, understanding the fundamentals, good design uh, practices, uh, best practices, understanding basic uh, design patterns, uh, writing clean, simple code, understanding simple architecture, being able to communicate well, that is gonna secure you to work, not whether or not you learn the latest MERN stack or something. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but I'm just, you know, if you wanna get a job or you want to start a business. Outside of tech, there's still a ton of boring manual work that should have been automated long ago and it doesn't require breakthroughs. Use machine learning, but focus on creating value over changing the world. What, when you solve a problem, any problem, everyone wins. Silicon Valley has deluded us to believe that we should be taking moonshots rather than improving our local communities and lives of people we know. I love Uber and it has changed the world, but if keeping Uber alive costs five billion per quarter, maybe something is wrong. Yes, some companies are long-term plays and will affect seven billion people, but simpler improvements like reducing data entry mistakes is a boring industry also, but also creates value. Uh, learning ML is best way to fight fear of AI. Uh, that's interesting. When we hear of automation killing jobs because nothing sells like fear. Uh, let me get into that. See, I haven't read this article yet. I'm reading it with you, giving you my live reaction. This is going to be a big part of my channel going forward, picking out interesting pieces, giving you the perspective of an ancient 169-year-old dragon developer. And uh, so this guy evidently has experience in the field as a developer. Um, I can see just by the way he thinks about it. He thinks about development like uh, somebody who's done it for a bit as opposed to a noobling. Um, uh, yeah, so he points out nothing sells like fear. You're gonna learn all about that in my Lizard Wizard video book where I teach how, I teach you the operating system of your brain. Fear is a primary motivator. That's why they use fear so much in election and politics. They use it uh, all over the place. They use fear as because it's the primary driver of uh, all animals well, from lizards and up. It's the primary thing that our brains are concerned with. That's why you have all these fears and anxieties about things. It could be about whatever, asking a girl out, uh, whether you're gonna get a job, or whether your code's gonna work. You have all these anxieties and fears, and at the end of the day, when you think about it, nothing happens. It just sort of, eh, nothing really happens. So remember that when you're feeling panicked about stuff, remember your brain is artificially magnified. Uh, yeah, anyway. Uh, when we read, okay, just nothing sells like fear, nothing, be, nothing, not, excuse me, not because technological unemployment is around the corner. Pick up machine learning, then try conceptualizing, training, and deploying a model to solve a real problem. You'll quickly sell, see how hard this still is, and secondly, how far we must be away from AGI takeover. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Basically saying, don't worry, AI is not going to replace coders anytime too soon. AI can't properly drive a car yet, you know. Uh, infrastructure is super underdeveloped and real data is messy. When you download a CSV from Kaggle to train a model for a specific problem, 99% of the work has been done for you. For more people, if more people did this, they'd sleep better at night. So that's an interesting thing. Uh, 
brings up another point I keep making and stressing is that um, for the research in AI, and you need real advanced math apparently, but most of us are just going to be plugging into APIs, you know? He's going to go implement a, some AI model, throw some data at it, Bob's your uncle, right? This, all, this, this fear that you need advanced math for most development is, is, is just false. It's just false. Anyway, let's go on. There is a gap in tools to make ML easy. Ease of use has done more for ML adoption than any algorithm breakthroughs over the last 10 years. We're almost at the point where software engineers can cobble together an ML solution using out-of-the-box components, but it's not easy enough yet. As tools progress, we'll see pure ML jobs, but a we will, excuse me, we'll see less pure ML jobs, but a huge increase in software engineers using ML to solve all sorts of problems, and more companies outside of tech benefiting. Uh, Okay, I don't know what his chip guy is, but anyway, we'll skip that. ML is driving value around the world, but I think we've barely scratched the surface. Wait until the right tools are here. Cool. Uh, do software engineering first. Unless you have an advanced degree in AI-related subject, do yourself a favor, learn software engineering, then move into AI. Learning software engineering is like getting MBA in technology when MBAs were valuable. You learn the fundamentals, create full stack solutions, and understand the code that facilitates ML. There are also more jobs, and it will be easier to change careers as industry landscapes shift. So there you go. Something, again, I've been saying for a long time, learn the full stack, learn your fundamentals, and uh, then you can just hook into AI. Many software engineers go on to successful careers in ML, machine learning, data science, but you rather to see the opposite. Yeah, yeah. So, again, as I've been preaching for the longest time, do the fundamentals, do the web. Lots of opportunities will be there. If you want to specialize in AI, you can. You want to go to game development, you can. You want to stick to um, web stack. If you want to do front end, back end. You want to do WordPress development and Shopify impl implementations. You couldn't do all these things. Um, you know, let's, let's read the conclusion. There's mega hype, hype, there is mega hype around AI, and with any rise comes a fall. But that doesn't have to be a bad thing if we're prepared. If we focus on developing general skill sets, including ML, solving real problems and creating value, there'll always be something for us to do. So yeah, there's this guy, it's on toward data science. Uh, yeah, so um, there you go, this is a guy, they got four and a half thousand likes, so it seems like a popular piece. I'll link to it after this, uh, I archive this, uh, this uh, stream. So there you go, guys. Uh, from the ML point of view, uh, a lot of what I've been talking about for years now, and again, it's not like I'm a, a wizard here, I've just been doing this for 30 years, and the principles of software development and uh, how systems come out and how businesses develop it's always the same. Like I remember a few years ago when uh, when crypto was all the rage. Everybody's into crypto, uh, and you can go watch my videos. And I said that crypto was not going to take over the world as a, a development um, uh, platform, if you will. And it's not a platform, but you know what I mean. Like there was going to be crypto developers in there on every street corner. It was not like it, it was. I said back then it was a niche technology. I call that a need to nerd technology. And it's not dissing, I'm not insulting crypto. I'm just saying that it's a very niche technology. So when the hype machine was up and running a few years back, and everybody, oh, crypto, crypto, and I was like, eh, take it easy, guys. Who was right, right? Um, another thing I said about crypto, I said when Bitcoin was at 18,000, 19,000 a coin, I said, you know, I don't know where it's going to go, but I wouldn't be buying now. And sure enough, it tumbled pretty hard, you know. Um, and don't ask me where it's going to go now. Who knows? It's, it's firmly in the uh, crypto and Bitcoin. Uh, it's firmly in the uh, speculator uh, psychology uh, phase of its existence. So who knows where it's going to go? But anyway, I only mention it to, to make a point where you see in any uh, technology fad, you see a big spike and then a crash and it settles down and its true value comes out. So apparently in, back in July, you saw that happening in the uh, AI space. And with this guy, 
who, uh, you know, it's, he's on the Towards Data Science website. Uh, you can assume uh, that he knows uh, data science right here. Uh, you know, he's basically saying exactly what I've been saying, and I'm not a data scientist, and I'm not a ML uh, coder by any means. But the principles hold true. So there you go. That was the main point of this um, the stream. Was how are we doing for time now? 15 minutes in. So I'll do a little Q&A before I sign off. And uh, we'll take it from there. So let me just get this into view. OK, I hope everybody is well. Uh, everybody, uh, ML is machine learning. It's uh, it's within the umbrella of, of AI. Um, Bitcoin is almost back to eighteen thousand. Last time I saw it, it's back to it's like thirteen thousand, right? Is there, or is it fourteen thousand in U.S. dollars? Uh, is it back to eighteen thousand now? I don't know, but uh, you know, you'd still be underwater if you had bought when I told you not to buy. Uh, Sajad, what is the meaning of life, Steph? Well, it depends on your perspective, I suppose. Uh, for your lizard brain, the meaning of life is to survive, thrive, and reproduce. That's the lizard brain. Uh, for you, it depends on the individual, but I might have to do a, a dedicated video on that. Uh, can you create your own programming language? You could if you want, but I'm not sure why you'd want to. Uh, there's so many now. Uh, uh, hold on, hold on. Ooh, 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 ooh. Watching this as a student doing a BS in data science. All right. So what do you think of that article, Dis, Dishad KP? What do you think? Ah, uh, there you go. So see, I like the community. The community steps in and answers questions. It's fantastic. Good. Watching this as a 42-year-old changing careers to web development. Hey. Congratulations. Never too late, because as you know, as a developer, you typically, once you establish yourself, you're going to make multiples of the average salary. And uh, so I'd rather, you know, even, you know, might as well make multiples of the average salary. Why not? Uh, Pachowski Gaming. What do you think of Laravel plus Vue for full test stack development? I think it's very good. Um, and we use it for our studio web. So it works great. Uh, it's a great, the Laravel guy knows what he's doing. And I have implicit trust in the decisions he makes in terms of, uh, I think it's Leodorf, I think his name is. I have implicit trust in the decision he, he makes with regards to that framework. And I like Vue, as you guys know. What do you think about dot club, dot, dot club domains? Is it okay to get it? Why not? Domain names are not nearly as important in terms of the extension. You know, dot .club is an extension, dot .com is an extension, dot .net is an extension. They're not nearly as important as they used to be because people, they're used to, they're used to alternative domains, right? Back in the day when I started, dot, you had dot .com, dot .org, dot .net. That was it. You couldn't get a dot .org unless you were a... a um, uh, what's it called? Nonprofit organization. You can only get a .NET if you were uh, like a, a service provider, a network provider, and .com was for a company. Uh, that was it. That's all you had. Then later on, country-based domains came out, like .ca for Canada, uh, you know, etc. Um, but that has kind of gone away. Now I still. I still have a, a kind of an inclination, an emotional inclination to prefer dot coms, but that's that's not really based in fact anything anymore, you know. Uh, although there's a little bit of prestige if you have the dot com. Like I registered studioweb dot com in 1998, so uh, that's a cool domain name, and that was for my web development studio, Studio Web, back in '98. Now it's an educational platform, but yeah. Another site I have, killersites.com, that was registered in 1996. So I've been running that since 2000 about. Uh, let's see. What is the most difficult area to automate in your opinion? Not art nor writing. In terms of AI? I don't know. I don't know. Um, the more variables you have, the more difficult it is. 
it is to automate. Thoughts on GPT-3? I think it has a tremendous application, but it's a niche technology. It's a need to nerd technology. You know, I don't think it's going to be like uh, this thing that's going to change the world overnight, but it's, it's, it's a progression, you know. Uh, what do you work as? I'm not sure what you mean by that. Uh, I run uh, Studio Web and other things. Can you answer what is considered full stack in two minutes or less? Full stack developer writes code for both front end and back end of web applications. Uh, so what's the front end? That's the code that you see running in the web browser, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. And the back end is a code that runs on the server. The server is considered a back end. The browser is considered a front end. Why is the server considered a back end? Because the server is kind of the, the beginning of the process. When you come to a website and you say you load up google.com or you load up studioweb.com, when you type in the domain name or you click on a link, the server is, is the first, is, is the bottom of the process, the beginning of the process. The, the server, a server uh, software, server hardware, web servers, right? It receives a request, it receives a notice, somebody clicked on this link, and it will then send out all the code to generate the website to your web browser. And then your web browser, which is a program, it receives all that code, and then it processes the code. The code is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And then it, it builds the page for you. So the server starts the process, the web browser, it's handed off the code, it renders, it processes all that code to generate the pages for you. So the, so the web browser is the front end, it's what you see, it's in front of you, and the server is the back end, it's kind of like the engine that powers everything. That's, so when you're doing full stack, you think of like a burger, the top is the, is the front end, the top of the burger, and the bottom end is the, the web server, and you got all these layers in between, you got a database, and you got you know, different layers, we won't get into it full stack from top to bottom. Some people are front end, they just do front end, some people are just back end, some people do full stack. I hope that answers that question. Your opinion on Golang, niche product. I don't know much about the language. I'm sure it's pretty good. I'm sure it has its uses, but I think it's a niche product. I would say it's a need to nerd technology, something to be aware of, something that you may implement depending on the needs of a particular job. Uh, what are tech companies asking, excuse me, why are tech companies asking so many hard questions yet they are not even that big? Well, the size doesn't matter. Uh, that's what she said. Uh, but what really happened, uh, what really happens in that situation is you have HR departments and they're, they're given uh, a set of protocols, an edict. They said, you got to check for this, 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 and they're just covering their, uh, their behinds by putting out these crazy tests. We used to see that. I remember I used to see that in the 90s where you would go in there and uh, the job requirements would ask for like 50 different things and no developer knows all these things, you know, because the HR departments have no idea what's going on to begin with anyway. Uh, is being a, a web developer a much more fruitful career? A much more fruitful, relative to what? Much more fruitful than what? Uh, I don't know. You have to give me context there. Uh, all right, how are we doing for time? I'll be ending this at a half an hour because I'm trying to do more streams more often, but not as long. According to your opinion, is the ML really going to die as a single job because ML is quite hard and definitely not for everyone? No, I don't think the difficulty of ML is going to make it die. I think that, um, you know, it's just, it's, it's going to go through its proper life cycle where you have early uh, development of it. And then as it spreads out, you're going to have people just consume ML based services. Um, it's not going to die. I just, you know, I couldn't say how big it's going to be, but I can say for sure that uh, front end full stack developers, I think they're always going to outnumber ML developers in terms of opportunity because um, once, it, uh, once a, a particular AI is developed, if you will, like GPT-3, people won't need to redevelop it. It will be done, they'll just implement it. It's the implementation on a per-client basis that's going to be the bulk of the development work. 
What do you work as? I uh, run Studio Web, which is a SaaS software as a service that's used in schools around the world, it teaches code. And what people see as uh, students in Studio Web, they see a small percentage of what the application does. Uh, I got my hands in other things. Because I'm 169 years old, I have my tentacles in different areas, and I just do what I want uh, at this point in time. So what I'm doing now, I just enjoy what I do. I do this as a hobby as much as anything else. Did you watch Khabib versus, uh, I can't pronounce his last name. Uh, I did not watch it. I intend to watch it at some point. I heard Khabib retired, though. I think that's a tactic. I think he's just retiring so he can go after some Conor McGregor big money, right? It's a good tactic. Uh, Steph, how is your day going about to get into PHP in Studio Web? Last cert, I need thinking of a project I make along with learning to code. Oh, that's cool. Well, that's cool. Well, uh, my day is going pretty good. It's not bad. It's not bad. What time is it? Four o'clock. I had a day today. I had to take care of a bunch of bureaucratic, boring stuff. Like uh, my one of my accountants called me up, say, yeah, we need to know what this is and what's this investment doing and that. And it's like, oh, I got to go to this and I got to go to that. All kinds of boring stuff like that. Um, as congratulations, I assume since you're going for the PHP, that means you've done the other three. Congrats on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, think of a project. Now, again, once you do the PHP, as I suggest, go out there and find some small client to do some work for. And now with, with the PHP in your back pocket, you'll be able to go in there and do all kinds of different things. Because you'll know server-side program. Uh, please, have you idea about ML? I know what you mean by that. I, I came here for the Ruby jokes. Uh, not every day. You can't have candy every day. Best skills to learn. Well, besides your foundations, uh, learn to communicate well, learn to stay calm, um, I talk about that in other videos. Uh, can you run PHP or Node.js, a standalone website using IndexedDB or SQLite? I need the web app to run on and offline. Ah, I haven't used Node with SQLite. Um, I've looked at SQLite, but I've never had a need for that myself in terms of a database. I suppose you would use that for offline, but could you do an offline web app with PWA and do local storage via JS? Check into that maybe. Hmm. Linux FMM, what type of domains do you use? I have .coms and .nets, but mostly .coms. I named my turtle Ruby. That's right. That's good. That's good. What do you think? Okay, hold on. Let me click on it. Anna says, what do you think of mobile development? Is it a dead-end career? No, I don't think so. But I think it's going to tilt towards... Uh, Less native mobile and more uh, hybrid mobile, PWA, Flutter, whatnot, that kind of stuff. Uh, I want to try your mentoring program. It will, can help me change my career. Yeah, that's the whole idea. Um, I'm going to be expanding upon that, by the way. The mentoring program, in case you don't know, I launched it seven months ago as a pilot to see what would happen. I had a lot of people ask me, you do mentoring, you do mentoring, you do mentoring. And I never got around to it. And I finally said, I'll put something up. Mentoring program basically covers everything I teach, plus certifications, we're a private group, Zoom meetings, private Zoom meetings, option consultation, but I'm expanding upon that. And because uh, it, it did very well, people like it. So I plan on, ex I'm expanding the offering. I'm gonna be putting more training uh, the idea behind all my teaching is very practical and pragmatic. I'm less oriented towards the technology, more oriented towards the end goal, which is to build things or to get a job or to start freelancing or to build your own uh, software business. So I'm adding more to it. Right now I teach uh, the coding and the certifications. You get the freelance training, the entrepreneur training, but adding in uh, what I call Lizard Wizard, which is the uh, blueprint for your mind. And then even basic finance and basic health, sort of an end-to-end -end solution stuff I picked up over the last 30 years. Mm, what else we got here? What are the things we should focus on when building our own portfolio website? Real-world projects is number one. 
real world projects. You want to show that you can work with real clients. That's why I suggest once you do your fundamentals, you go out there and you do one or two freebie, maybe two or three small freebie jobs for real clients. Because when you go into a job interview and you can show in your portfolio that you actually built real projects for real businesses, even start a small startup businesses, it's much more interesting to a prospective employer than if you would just have a bunch of tutorials up there. Uh, is Studio Web your main source of income? Any tips for aspiring entrepreneur wanting to set up your own business? It is not my main source of income. Um, you have to, as an entrepreneur, be willing to pivot your ideas, switch up, try different things. Uh, you want to deploy quickly. Uh, you don't. You want to deploy quickly and get any product or idea to market as cheaply as quickly as possible to see if it works. And then from there, you decide. You you let the success or failure of your products or services uh, lead you in one direction or the other. Follow the money, as one of my mentors told me way back in the day. So that if I was to give a single piece of advice for entrepreneurs. Uh, you have to be willing to pivot. That means switch off of ideas that are not working out and, uh, and be willing to get out ideas as quickly as possible. I guess that's two things. As quickly as possible. Uh, so you figure it out because you know what? You can analyze all you want. You can speculate all you want. You can do surveys all you want. But you won't really know whether a product or service is going to be successful until it gets into the hands of people and they actually use it and see if they're willing to pay for it. So get, just get it out quick. Uh, you know, in, in, the, um, uh, in, the, in, the, in the venture capital world, they call that minimum viable product, MVP. Uh, in the, you know, as an entrepreneur for 30 years now, 25, 29, 25, 30 years, forget now, uh, it's just called being in business. Just get it out quick, see what happens. Is R dead or should I go with Python? I don't know if R is dead, but um, again, R is one of those uh, need to nerd techs. I think uh, Python is the dominant player in that space. I assume you're talking about ML and data sciences and stuff. Um, I would just go with uh, Python for now because it, again, it gives you, R puts you into a very narrow range of jobs you could do. Python is much broader, more opportunity that way. All right. Uh, what's your vision for IoT? Any idea how it can imply, how it can be applied in road safety? Oof, I'm not an IoT expert by any means. I barely know much about it, except you know superficially. Um, you'd have to look into that again. That's not so much about that's see that's an example of domain knowledge IoT, right? That's so much about whether or not you're a crack, a crack. IoT coder, it's whether or not you understand the space, meaning the business, that IoT is all about. There's all kinds of IoT, especially within the context of road safety. You know, people like Tesla would know much more about that than me. Mm. Leo Zhang, how often do you hold these kind of Q&A sessions? I saw this as a coincidence. It helps to know so I can prepare my questions. Thanks. Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, I used to do it a lot more. I've cut it down quite a bit recently, but I plan to bring it back uh, more often. All right, already 33 minutes. I'm going to answer a few more. I'm going to add it here. Uh, I plan to make it more steady. Any book about algos and DS you would recommend? Probably not thick textbooks. I mean, something to recap the most important frequence, frequent ones. I don't know offhand. It's not my. Uh, it's not my 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 specialization. I would just find beginners books. I got that from one of the best developers I ever known. He's worked at Apple and other huge companies, and he's an amazing developer. He gave me some good advice. You want to learn a language and technology? Just buy the, the beginners book and just jump from there. That's how you quickly jump in. Uh, had this question in mind: Is college degree really important for a job in tech? Depends on what level. If you're looking to start your own, no. If you're looking for small, medium-sized businesses, probably much, 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 much less. For a large corporation, it still has some importance. Although, as I point out, Google, I believe Apple, 
released, they did a study a couple years ago and they found that they had no, there was no performance difference, no quality difference in their employees, whether or not they had a higher degree. And Google just released a program basically saying to uh, students that don't waste your money and time going to university for a higher degree, come and do our program in eight, nine months and you will be skilled enough. <laughs> 1990 is when you were born. That's it. That's it. Uh, any advice on a software development paradigm suited to a small team? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the web stack, I'd stay away from Java. Uh, if you want to go uh, small team development, you want to use one the later nimbler languages like JavaScript, like PHP, like a Python, like a Ruby. Although, anyway, uh, yeah, you want to go with the lighter, nimbler languages. Um, if you're looking at mobile, again, I would go hybrid instead of native simply because you can develop for both platforms at the same time. Uh, that is my advice. Let me, let me finalize this college degree thing. If you have a college degree, it's not going to hurt. And there are still a lot of jobs out there where if you have a college degree, you need a college degree to get in. But I think that is slowly fading. Uh, Will software architects still be in demand in the future? Yes, they will. Can our programming language be applied on business? I don't know. Uh, that's such a broad question. I suppose you could use R to solve business programming uh, problems. Applied ML is a way to go with full stack dev. Have you have any background in ML? No, I do not. I never claim to. Uh, uh, but what I was discussing in that article about ML is just, it's just I, it, people who follow me know I've been talking the same exact principles with regards to other types of programming. It's, it's universal, it's consistent. Uh, uh, we'll see, we'll ask, answer this last question here. I am be. Ima, be straight. I have this essay, and I'm lost on this. Explain how the principles of computer programming are applied to different, in different languages. Though, thought I'd take a cheeky shot on asking you. I'll explain how the principles of computer programming. Yeah, because many, many of the modern languages are based on the same principles. It's like um, the analogy I like to make is cars. You got Porsche, you got Audi, you got BMW, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, Ferrari, et cetera. They're different, but the same principles of the way the engines work, uh, the way the suspensions work, uh, aerodynamics are all the same. So if you learn object oriented principles in C sharp or object oriented principles in Java, they're the same. There's some nuanced differences here and there. Uh, they'll treat, uh, they'll have some subtle differences, sometimes not so subtle, but the basic fundamental principles, inheritance, encapsulation, uh, modularity, uh, uh, the, the design patterns, regardless of the language, it's the same. So as I say, if you learn OO object-oriented programming in Python as an example, you pretty much learned OO in all of the languages. Yes, there are things that you do in Python you wouldn't do in Ruby, or you wouldn't do in C sharp, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, in Ruby, for example, everything is an object. Even your integers are objects. Whereas in Java, by default, they're primitives. Um, maybe they've changed it in the later version of Java. So you used to have to cast um, your primitives into objects to, to get object-oriented capabilities applied to uh, these things like integers. Whereas in Ruby, everything was an integer. For, uh, excuse me, everything's an object from the get-go, which was kind of cool. Um, but you know, anyway. I was, I'm, I'm, I'm resisting to make the Ruby joke. I won't make the Ruby joke today. Uh, how are we going? All right, so. Uh, why so many R questions? You never know. What is ML? Machine learning, part of AI. All right, guys, 40 minutes. Uh, let's go. Here. Okay, so many more questions, but I got to go. I hope you enjoyed the uh, live stream. Um, please give me a thumbs up if you liked it. The more thumbs up, the more the algos appreciate it, and the more likely I'll do these on a regular basis. So I appreciate that. So give me some thumbs up if you do like it. Wow, so many questions. 
So many questions. Okay, one last one. Mr. El Gato. He's got a good name. I'm 54, 30 years experience software runner. Can I make a cur my current salary 150K as a freelance? You can. There's going to be a lag time with that uh, as you establish yourself in the space. Um, so what I would do if I were you, thanks for the thumbs up, everybody. appreciate it. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, you're making 150 now. It's going to take, there's always a lag time when you're going into the freelance space. Also, what I would do is in your area, uh, start looking at what the freelance opportunities would be. Start poking around, uh, postings and so forth. And um, transition, transition. Don't quit your job and start because you're going to start at zero and there's going to be some, uh, a certain amount of time. Unless you've got a lot of contacts already. Some people will be able to move from your job and maybe start doing freelance for uh, people you know in industry. I don't know. But I would transition into it. So get, start building your stable of clients on the side and start building up. But yet, can you make 150? It's not a problem. It's, uh, it's, it's not a problem. The, you know, assuming all things being equal, assuming uh, 150 is the, the typical salary in your area. So I'm sure you could do the same as a freelancer. Also remember, when you're freelancing, in most jurisdictions, up, up, I'm up here in uh, the cold white north of Canada, you have tax advantages when you are a uh, business owner. Now, up here, when you're making over like 60 or 70,000 a year profit, then you move from a uh, solopreneur, you move into, uh, you set up some sort of limited liability corporation, which gives you further tax advantages, write offs, computers, and equipment, and your cell phone. So, yes, it Short answer, yes. You have, you have the long answer, too. Uh, I keep answering you. Hey, man, how do you create a roadmap when creating your project? Up, oh, check out my freelance course. I map it all out there. <laughs> all right, guys, I got to go. I'm 10 minutes over. Thanks for joining, and I appreciate the thumbs up. And we'll end with my, uh, my main CSI ASMR relaxation video people love. At least I do. <laughs>